Okay, we are live. <laughs> so, um, this is the much anticipated Facebook Live uh, She Build Spotlight. So, I'm, I'm going to share this. I've got a couple of things going on now. Um, let's see. So, I'm going to actually let me set you down for a moment. Bear with us, people. <laughs> So I'm sharing this on my She Builds page, um, and I don't know how to share it yet <laughs> on my phone. So um, let's see. Okay, I see it. So I am sharing starting a watch party and so I see my guest is on I'm just sharing it now Zemi so give me one moment Welcome to all of you ladies coming on board. Please like and share this and let us know where you're watching from. Okay. And I'm sharing this to my, um, my main page, Desiree and Mondesir, um, as well. So everyone over there can catch the action. This is why you need assistance. Okay. Okay, we're done. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to welcome all of you. First of all, to She Builds. Thank you to all of you who have liked our Facebook page um, and who um, and, and are maybe new to our Facebook page and say, "Who is this woman? What is she doing? Who is she interviewing?" You know, well, I'm Desiree and Mondesir. Um, I'm currently residing in Charlotte, North Carolina. And She Builds is literally like eight days old. <laughs> I kid you not. We hit the ground running. Um, I launched it last Monday. And I, uh, the words dropped in my spirit, graced to build. And uh, soon after, she builds. So I was like, ooh, that's so good. And she builds is easy to hashtag and use. But all the handles were taken. <laughs> so I went with um, graced to to build um, as our handle and our username for Facebook and Instagram. So I put those pages up immediately, started posting immediately, and welcome to all of you lovely ladies and handsome gents who are coming on board. And, and so I launched it and I was very excited and I was like, we are just gonna hit the ground running. So what do I wanna do? I want to interview Zemi Stewart, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but I want to host these She Builds Spotlights while I'm really getting ahead of myself. You can tell how excited I am. So for those of you who don't know, this is She Builds. This is um, an inspirational platform for women who are graced to build, okay? And, and what I mean by grace is an apostolic grace. It doesn't mean you're an apostle, it doesn't even necessarily mean you're a minister, but it means you have um, an empowerment 
from heaven to build, to build blogs, to build brands, to build businesses, and of course to build ministries. So all of you ladies, I'm coming for you, okay? Especially women of color, I'm coming for you because we are the most marginalized women on the face of the planet but we're so powerful. I mean, we're so magical. Some people may be offended by that, and I don't mean anything spiritual when I say that, but we're just amazing. You know, hashtag black girl magic, hashtag all of you women magic. You know, we're excited. I mean, there's nothing more fierce and powerful than a determined woman. So I wanted to cater to all of you. Obviously, we have a biblical edge because I don't do, don't do anything without a biblical edge. <laughs> but I wanted to um, create a platform that would encourage women who are already in maybe the literary content space, the, the entrepreneurial space, and the ministerial space, or who maybe are hybrids and go back and forth because I'm definitely one of those. I'm sure, Zemi, you're one of those. You know, we'll get to Zemi in a moment. She's my lovely special guest. But um, I just wanted to share with you all a little bit. And now we're going to be doing spotlights. She builds spotlights, which are going to be interviews, literally putting a spotlight on wonderful, lovely, phenomenal women who are already building something. Things. So I want to talk to them, I'm going to grab them, and I want to say, what are you building? How did you build it? Teach all of us how you're doing it and inspire all of these other women and even the men who love us to build and, you know, for the fellas to encourage the women um, in their building projects, literally, <laughs> to cultivate. We know Dr. Miles Monroe talked about how men have a responsibility to cultivate women. Women do not go blind when they say, I do. God does not rob them of their sight and of their vision when they say, I do, or when their last name is changed. None of that happens. The idea is to have a joint mandate from heaven because he created them and gave them dominion over the world. So it's a joint mandate. And so our vision is just as important as the, the man we are married to or that we may marry, depending on where you are in your status. <laughs> and so this is something that I think men can learn from as well, but I am unashamedly catering to women and women of color, but everyone is welcome. So please like this, share this, let us know where you're watching from. And I want to tell you that I'm excited to introduce to you my friend, Zemi Stewart. Now, Zemi actually married one of my brothers from college, Ian Stewart. So hey, Ian, if you're watching, <laughs> thank you so much for letting us borrow your wife. I'm very excited about this. She is a lovely lady dwelling in the Bahamas. And this is actually my first time face to face, so to speak, meeting her so I'm very excited about that so now I'm going to figure out how to bring her on board because I've never brought someone onto a Facebook live so let's figure this out okay do 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 and y'all just bear with me okay do it see you gotta stay on edge <laughs> hey this is so exciting. <laughs> I'm still in the car. Ian Hey, Ian. <laughs> See, y'all, that's family, okay? That's family. He can sing too, y'all. But that's, we're not talking about Ian tonight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but this is amazing. I love technology because we can connect, you know, literally, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, and you are in what, Nassau, Bahamas? Or close yeah, to Yeah, Nassau, exactly. Yeah. NASA. So this yes, is exactly. We had a couple technological quirks, but I'm super excited that we were able to get on board and share with all of you. It looks like we have a, a you know a good amount of people watching, and it looks like we lost her, but I'm sure she'll pop back up. Um, and so let's see. I don't know what happened. So y'all just bear with us. Just bear with us because technology and Wi-Fi. There we go. Over country. Yes. <laughs> So, Zemi, tell us about yourself. Who are you? What do you do? What are you passionate about? Well, that's a, a loaded question these days. Um, so, when I was a child, I'll start there. I always wanted to be a writer, and I was very good in school. Um, you know, and, and when I told my teachers I wanted to be a writer, they said, well, you know, you could be anything. You could be a doctor. You could be a lawyer, which, were the, which are the key professions, even today in the Bahamas. 
and I was adamant that I wanted to be a writer. There was nothing else that I wanted to do up until um, my mom said, well, Zemi, you know, if you, if you, unless you write a best-selling book, you're going to be broke. And so, you know, I, I didn't really take that to heart. I'm like, you know what, mommy, this is what I want to do. But when she passed away, those words kind of stuck with me. And I was 12 when she passed away. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, she was supportive, but at the same time, she kind of frowned upon this because she didn't know if I could make it doing that. And so what I would do is I would turn to poetry. So I get my little hit, my little fix, write a quick poem, and then go about my business. And so that's how I got to write my first book, which is a book of poems. And so outside of that, you know, I, because I kind of swerved away from being a writer in school, I didn't really know what I wanted to be. And so I was, again, good at various subjects, didn't know what I wanted to do. And I ended up um, realizing that I like math um, when I went to college here. And then so I started to study math and did that in university, came home, became a business analyst. So that's what I do by profession. You know, but outside of that, everything that I've ever done has involved some aspect of writing. And, you know, recently, well, I, I recommitted my life to Christ when I was um, with with my life and turning my life around and you know, that's where we are today. So forming a ministry and just everything that's going on in the past few years, even getting married, everything had really to do with that decision, which was to give my life to Christ. Yeah. And I do have to say this, and this isn't the focal point, but I love all things weddings and Zemi <laughs> stunning bride. Like, were you in a magazine? Thank you. I think, were you in a magazine or a publication? We were in, we were in Essence Online. We were in Essence oh. Online. Which was incredible. It was, you know, it was, it's, it was a great experience. I wouldn't want a wedding plan again, personally. Um, no, Ian drove me crazy. Okay. okay thanks. I mean, um, Ian, Ian didn't have clothes for the wedding. I think it was 30 days out and he had nothing. And I was like, you know what? I can't even worry about you, whatever you look like. I just going to make sure that I look okay. Right. And so, you know, sometimes in life, you have to just release other people and right. just focus on you. And, oh, and he had his clothes before me. He wanted me to say that he was, <laughs> he had his clothes before I did in the end. You know, but in general, um, even with wife her, and it, when that statement made me think about that is, the whole premise of wife fur is to focus on you, the woman. So you're focusing on getting you together, right. making sure you're healed emotionally, making sure you check your attitude. You're not worried about what your husband is doing. You focus 100% on you because at the end of the day, you can only change you. And by changing your behavior, we learn even biblically, our behavior can impact our husband's behavior. Absolutely. And so, yeah, exactly. Well, tell us some more about wife her. I didn't even mention that. My notes are on my phone, and I wasn't planning on doing this on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> We're winging it, y'all, but this is exciting. Well, same, same as you. I, you know, I kept hearing the words healed, empowered, restored for a while. Like, I had it up on my, my regular website, and, um, you know, I had this idea that I, I knew that when I lost my mom at a young age that I was lacking, like, lacking in terms of, you know, cooking, cleaning, like there was things that I just didn't have in place, even learning how to, to co co try to act in a marriage, because even in my parents' marriage, I saw a lot of dysfunction. I saw a lot of arguing. I didn't see a lot of affection. And so I kind of felt right. that I was going into marriage unprepared and I did my best to prepare, the, you know, in ways that I could. But when you get into the swing of wedding planning and, you know, all of that shifts into gear, your mind kind of shifts focus, Right. And so I realized that there were some areas that I was just totally unprepared for. And as a single, I had wanted to start something for wives, like wife preparation. And I talked to Ian about it all the time, like things I wanted to do. And it never really got off the ground. And then, um, it's going to sound crazy, but I had a little kitten called Heaven. And when she, when she came into my life for those seven days, um, I felt like she was a godsend. And when she passed away after those seven days, it really caused, it, it awakened something in me that made me just want to go after whatever it was that had been on my heart. And so right, right after she passed away, not even a, a month later, I, I launched 
um, Wi-Fi is easier these days because you have social media. You can just create a page and then you're just out there, you know, so it's much easier these days to get a leg up, whether it's in business, whether it's in ministry, because social media uh, missionaries is a thing. Like we help to get the word of God out there. And I consider myself to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. No matter where I go, I hosted a vision board workshop just yesterday. I didn't know if they were Christian or not, but I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> you know, so at the end of the day, whatever you get from me, that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to represent him and the change that he did in my life. Cause I was a hot mess. I was a serial dater. I had been single for like six months since 12 years old up until, you know, you know, leading into marriage. And so I was a hot mess and I needed Jesus and what he's done in my life. Like, you know, when people say they get saved, they mean like, you know, I'm not going to hell. Anyway. Right. But for me, it was like God literally saved my life. I struggled with depression for years and, you know, I just felt like I could feel that I was giving up. Mm -hmm. I was, I was giving up. I was never going to commit suicide, but I was just giving up on, on life and of myself. And I just needed God. And, you know, it was after a rough breakup. I was on the floor crying every day and I was just so broken. I had lost three mother figures that year. It was February. It was July. It was November. And I was just done. Like I was just so done with pain, done with cycles. And then God met me right there. And I, it's crazy because um, I got saved via a, a secular song. It's Justin Timberlake Mirrors. I don't know if you know that song. I don't want to lose you now. I'm looking right at the other half of me. And at the time I was thinking, oh, God is telling me that this guy is my soulmate. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, I got to pursue God because this guy is coming back, you know, real delusional. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, over time, God revealed to me that no, you are my mirror, you know? And so if you see that song played today, I cry and I worship God. Like that is, a, you know, like that is a Christian gospel song because of what it meant to me in my life. And so, you know, God can meet you wherever you are. And if you allow him to come into your life and transform your life and you be obedient to him, you know, he can totally shift your whole life. And, you know, if I wasn't with um, my husband, who was very supportive of me, like if I was still dating the guys I were, were dating, who would be going out clubbing, who I don't know who they're texting late at night, who's right. telling me like, I want to go out with the boys. I don't need to go out with you. You know, like all of that stuff. I was so worried about, is he cheating on me? What is he doing? Um, what's in his phone? I was so worried about that, that I couldn't even focus on purpose. Right. I couldn't even focus on like really digging down into the word because I'm so emotionally like mixed up wondering like what you doing? How are you disrespecting me? How are you making me look foolish out here? And so having, having someone who is very supportive, who is stable, who is faithful and loyal really mm -hmm. gives you the foundation you need to go out there and be that type of woman. And like, I, I think about the Proverbs 31 woman a lot. And she was who she was because of her husband. And he was who he was because of her. So right. yeah, she was doing all these things. And she was doing like she was doing the most. And even on today's <laughs> standards, she was doing the utmost most, but she did it to a high standard. And I'm so happy the Bible created that standard for us. And mm -hmm. it says that her husband was respected at the city gates. He wasn't respected yeah. because that was his wife, although that was a part of it. He had an honorable right. wife, but he in, a, in and of himself was respected. And so, you know, I always think like you are who you choose. She was who she was because of him and likewise him because of her. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's all the fuel I need. She's the only standard I need to go up there and just run. That's amazing. And I, I know this wasn't the plan. We're really sort of just flowing in and I don't want y'all to get in a car crash. <laughs> no, no. In the car, is there a way like you can put him on camera and don't look while you're driving if you're driving, brother. Don't look. <laughs> well, we but if you could sort of if you could share sort of from your perspective what it's been like, you know, and I know you guys are still newlyweds, but just cultivating Zemi and supporting her, you know, from the male, you know, husband perspective. Um, well, I'm, I'm pretty bashful, Desiree. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I think for us, it's, it's been, um, it's been a blessing. Um, and I think the, especially when it comes to support, um, 
it's been mutual, I think, from for both of our part. You know, I'm also in ministry and youth ministry at my church. Right. Um, and so um, I've been receiving the support from my wife um, in ministry as well. And, and I think because we both feed off of each other in ministry, I think it's been really effective um, in terms of our marriage, from our marriage perspective. Um, but I always look at my wife. She is truly her own. She's a firecracker. Um, and she's, she, she has her own source of strength. So right. my job has been, been really, really easy in terms of providing the support she needs because she's so self sufficient in the word. TV. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she she makes she is extremely purposeful and she makes the most out of every minute of every day that she has and so providing support to her has been has been relatively easy um because she is so um self-driven um but i think for, especially for, particularly from a spiritual perspective um i think we we understand each other we have an appreciation for who we are as individuals mm -hmm. and we support each other out of that um zemi um is has not just like one ministry right mm -hmm. she also has has started multiple businesses um right. i think that are, that are were born out of even the same experience with the kitten um she also has a business called heaven center which is a uh, marriage consultancy and coaching business um, that she's also started and that has been um, been extremely fruitful in the short space of time that she's she's begun that that business venture um, so Zemi and of herself I think is, is um, a, a great spouse and um, very purposeful <laughs> as I said before and um, but I mean even in every marriage you know there's gonna be uh, um, a butting of heads um, right. We also face challenges in our own marriage. Mm -hmm. um, but I think once we remain focused on, you know, the, the major stuff and as we work through the things um, that the issues and, and that we face on an everyday basis mm -hmm. um, and once we remain focused on God and, and understand that, you know what, we're in this for the long haul. Um, right. We are committed to each other. We are committed to making it work. Um, our, our, marriage will con our marriage will continue to, to produce the kind of fruit, um, I think, that, you know, that God requires of us. And not just spiritual fruit, but hopefully children coming, children to come. So uh, it's been great. Definitely. He's putting you on the spot, girl. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I don't know if I've ever said this to you guys. I have this thing. It's been like since college. It, it's prophetic. And I wish it applied to myself, <laughs> but I can look at a couple and I can be like, yes, that's good. That's good. I don't have to know you. And then I can look at a couple and be like, oh dear God, like <laughs> this is not going to go well. You know? And so when I, I never met you, you know, I know Ian, but I never met you. But when I saw you, I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm just so excited because I knew it was literally a good thing, you know, like, like Proverbs says. And so I'm so excited um, for you guys and for just the mutual support, the mutual vision, the mutual cultivation, if you will, because I refuse to believe that women are the only helpmates on the planet. Like, yeah. and I understand that we do it in the sense of a marriage, you know, men, uh, embody the father, if you will. And then women sort of embody the Holy Spirit, but it's like, it's mutual. There's a give and a take, you know, there may be seasons where you fall back and support him and vice versa. And then there are seasons where you just go full steam ahead. You know, every marriage is different. It's a ministry, but I love the example that you guys have. And you know, you're still young, you know, and this is, I feel like it's going to be such an encouragement to so many other people. And then the other thing that sort of came to mind, um, and I didn't have a kitten named heaven <laughs> but when you when you recognize a prophetic moment you know and I kind of mm -hmm. talked about this I came online at like 3 30 in the morning for like 16 minutes last night and just prophesied but you know one of the things I was talking about was just stewarding a word so when you recognize that it's a prophetic word or a prophetic moment you know which you had a moment you know you you don't just say oh that's so wonderful you know that's just lovely mm -hmm. and you know there are times to do like marry and ponder things in your heart but more often than not when the lord gives you a word you're supposed to do something with it write the vision and yeah, exactly why so someone can run with it you know starting with yourself mm -hmm. and so i love that you did that so um tell us about heaven
been um, sent her. Tell us about that. So the business, well, I was, the idea was there for a while after planning our wedding. And, you know, a lot of things went wrong. And, and the pictures looked great. And, you know, we felt great afterwards. But a lot of things went wrong. For example, like our caterer bail two days before the wedding. And so I didn't get to do all that cute, like, you know, like bachelorette stuff, like all the pictures on the beach. You know, I didn't get to do any of that, although I bought like tons of swimsuits because, you know, I had for that. I had to figure out who was cooking the food. I had to get food to Eleuthera. Right. Like, I don't know if you've ever been to the Bahamas where it's a chain of islands. And so we were on what they call a family island, which is more remote. And I had, I had to actually request someone to bring in, like, crushed pepper, like, um, wow. what's it called? Crushed pepper from Nassau because you couldn't find it there. Like, I had to ask someone to bring in red onions, you know? Like, it was very, very, very stressful. And um, actually, that day, I'll, I'll tell this story. So um, that was Thursday when that happened. But in the morning, I was working out a couple days before the wedding. The wedding was on Saturday. And I saw this big spider while I was working out and I was like, ah, you know, like I'm not really afraid of anything, but I, I don't want no big spider around, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, I was like, you know, I, I kind of looked at it for a while and then I was like, you know, why am I not that afraid? And, and a part of me was like, I wonder if this is the enemy, like just kind of instill fear in me. And like, I got, I got up, like I dealt with the spider, I got up and I saw a message on my phone where one of my friends had prayed for me, shout out to Maya Newman. I don't know if she's on. And she prayed for me. She sent a voice note prayer. And I listened to it and I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Because it was a really like deep prayer. Mm -hmm. And so I picked up Ian that day and we went to uh, like 30, I picked him up like 15 miles away in one direction, drove about 40 miles in the other direction to drop the food off to the caterer. And um, she gave us the news. I won't go into that whole exchange, but like it was intense. I, actually, she, she dealt more with Ian than me because I, I can't, I, I, you know, I'm still dealing with the spirit of shut up. And so <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I couldn't address this woman in the heat of my emotions. Ian is more trained in that area than I am. And so Ian was the one who, who like, he kind of managed the situation, figured out what was wrong. And the beauty of it was when I did go inside to see what was happening, she, you could tell that she felt really bad that she had done yeah. that to someone as good as Ian. She didn't really know me, although she had said some things about me. She didn't mm -hmm. really know me, but in that exchange she had with Ian, she was almost like taken aback that this person was so sweet and genuine. She was, she gave him a hug. And you're oh. like, you could see all of that. Like she actually felt bad, but she had already made her decision. And so, um, you know, I'm, we all split up into different cars because we had also gone out that way to get my car rentals. Mm -hmm. And as we're driving down like the 30 miles to get back to where I am from, I just saw bawling. Like I am just like tears, just like loud mm -hmm. crying because a part of me was like, this never would have happened to me if my mommy was here. My mommy saved so many lives on that island. And I know for a fact that my mommy probably e either did something for her family or her herself. And so I knew that never, ever, ever would have happened to me if my mom was there because my mom had so good, so many connections. She was so well loved. And so I was just like devastated and the whole weight of my mom is not here. I'm getting married. All that fell on me. Mm -hmm. And so I get to the house where I'm staying and um, I open the car door and um, I think I remember telling God, like, if, if this is the enemy earlier that morning before all this happened, if this is the enemy, show me a snake. And so <laughs> I, I opened the car door as soon as I um, pull up to my rental after crying all the way down there. And then I see snake like wow. just right there looking at me. And Ian had also, Ian had also seen a snake as well. And so, um, that same day. And so I knew it was like the enemy trying to get at me, trying to disturb me. And so I recognized that experience. And so what led me to start heaven sent her was I realized that there are some women like me, women who've gone through trauma, who need more than just your regular, I know how to plan a wedding, wedding planner. Right. They need someone who's going to connect with them on an emotional level. They need someone who doesn't mind waking up at 2 a.m., who's going to give them the extra push, the extra encouragement, all of that. You know, so that's what led me to start Heaven Center to be, and we have more pick, picking up. <laughs> we added to church. Um, we have, you know, they needed more. And so that's what led me to start Heaven Center. <laughs> that's I'll me. say hi. 
<laughs> that is really amazing and I love that and I love that you put out the fleece and I know different people have different ideas about fleeces but hey if that's how the Lord speaks to you if that's how that works go for it <laughs> um, there's something else um, that came to mind it was just right there um, I hate it when that happens Okay, well, tell us about Math Zimmy. I'll remember, um, but Math with Miss Zimmy. Tell us about that, because I love that you're doing that. Okay, so I, well, again, that's from me realizing a, a disadvantage that I had growing up. So in school, I didn't really excel. I, was, I wasn't bad at math, but I didn't really excel to the level like, oh, you're going to pursue this in school one day. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of that was the way teachers taught, you know, sometimes they rush through the syllabus. Um, and so when I went off to university, I kind of, well, when I, was, when I was in school here, I did really well because of teachers who really put the time and attention. And when I went abroad, I started to do poorly again. And the difference was really the difference in teaching and, you know, like consideration and care and you being more than a number, et cetera. And so when I came home, like, I actually, I left university in my fourth year. I didn't, well, I completed it now, but I left in my fourth year because I had lost peace of staying in university. I had just gotten saved that year, and I fully lost my peace. And even though someone offered to pay for me to continue, they were going to give me, um, I think it was, it was a little over um, $10,000 to complete. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, like I, I turned them down and I turned them down because I saw a verse and I don't remember the verse today, but it pretty much said that if they do it for you, they're going to take credit. And so I didn't take the money from them because I knew God wanted to show his glory through that situation. And mm -hmm. so when I got back home, there was kind of a lull where I, um, I had come home to apply for a job. I had gotten a job interview. So I came home to do the job interview face to face and, um, they, um, and in that lull, I decided to start tutoring. So I started to tutor. And from there, it just kind of took off where um, I would tutor my friend, my co-workers kids. And I didn't really have a lot of time, but I would tutor my co co-workers kids. I walk over to Starbucks, come back, tutor. And then it just kind of kept growing from there where I took on more students and more students. Mm -hmm. um, but last year is when it kind of shifted where I, instead of tutoring, was trying to pull away and put up more resources. And so yeah. that's where I started to do the book and stuff like that, um, try to get it more online. So that's one of my goals still to transform what Math of Mizemi is so that I can reach more people with my patients and with, with my methods. So that's my yeah. pillars, like my word of my focus of the year, my word for the year is focus. Because I, my brain goes off all the time. Like, literally, it's all the time. And I have to make sure that I don't spread myself so thin. And I have to be careful as well because having that serial data mentality could translate into business. Mm -hmm. And I had to recognize that, like, I could be pursuing so many ideas, which is equal to pursuing so many different relationships in sequence that nothing is ever sustainable. And so when I realized, okay, serial data mentality can, can translate not only in relationships, but also in business, I was like, no, I have to focus. And so I have three, Ms. Martha Mizemi, Heaven Sent Her, and Wife Her, and I am not doing anything else but focusing on the development of those three, because that's the mandate that I was given. I love that. Someone said and publish online courses. So yes, yeah. that's the plan. <laughs> And there is a balance to being a serial entrepreneur. Um, and, and what I love about the Proverbs 31 woman is that she had it all. She did it yeah. all, but she didn't do it all at the same time. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's, there's different seasons and there's a beauty um, in recognizing what season you're in and what needs to be focused on in that season. And I actually remembered what I was going to say earlier, which you just keep reconfirming <laughs> every time you talk but what I what I'm hearing a lot is that you are becoming what you did not have you know yeah. with your mother leaving yeah. at an early age or with your educators and different things like that and I think that's so key and that's 
that was one of the reasons, you know, that I realized I wanted to do something with She Builds because mm-hmm. a lot of us don't have someone, if only out of jealousy, if only out of not knowing who to turn to, there can be a million reasons, but we don't have someone that we can turn to and trust who can inspire us, who can speak to us because how many of us have amazing girlfriends, but you can't go to them about business? Or you can't go to them about how to run a ministry or how to launch this or how to do mm-hmm, that, you know, mm-hmm. like they can support you, but they have no experiential knowledge, you know, and so I wanted to, you know, just from where I am with the resources that I have with the experiences that I've had, you know, and then of course, teaming up with others like you and I'm so bringing you back on to me. So, you know, I wanted to include other women to tell their stories, you know, to show that like, hey, we may not know you personally, but I can do it and she can do it and she can do it and she can do it and you can do it too, you know, and sometimes you really have to become what you did not have. And that is exactly where the times your sweet spot is because it's like, well, they didn't have that or they didn't have the right spirit. And what I like to say is even if someone is doing the same thing, you know, they can't do it like you can, you know? So I have one of my best friends teaches math, but she's not you, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm sure you guys teach it in a completely different way. You know what I mean? And so if she was to do something with that, I'm sure it would look completely different than what you're doing. So it's like, there's always a space for you when it's what you're supposed to do. And it doesn't matter how many other people are doing it or doing something similar. You know, some people are never going to connect with that person, but they're going to connect with you and vice versa. So it's like, this isn't like a pie mentality, you know, it's not like, oh my God, I have to get my slice, you know, before someone else can know. I mean, if it's a pie, it's infinity, you know, there's always going to be space for you to do what you were called to do, you know, and, and I, I just love that. And I think mentoring is something, um, sometimes we make it formal and we do have formal mentors and things like that, but it's, it's you and me sitting here in my room, in your car, you know, <laughs> over Facebook live, you know, and I'm sure yeah. I'm going to upload this to YouTube, you know, it's just sharing, you know, th- this is a resource. Y'all take advantage of this, you know, cause we are certainly hitting the ground running, you know, with this. And I'm, I'm just going to just grab women and be like, I'm interviewing you and you, and you, and you guys, you know, you're the embodiment of she builds. And that was the word I got for the year, you know, just build or build it, you know, and I didn't even realize that when I launched she build, you know, like, Oh, didn't you say that was the Lord gave you four months ago? <laughs> you know, I can't believe it's April by the way, but you know, it, the Lord will <laughs> prove his work. He will watch over it diligently to perform it, to bring it to pass in your life. So it's like, if he's telling you to do it, He's not leaving you out to dry by yourself. Mm-hmm. He's not saying, okay, you do this and you figure it out. Mm-mm. He's your business partner. He's your advisor. Yeah. Literally, mm-hmm. he is our counselor, you know, wonderful counselor, you know. And so <laughs> it's like we have the resources of heaven, you know. And yeah. then now down here, we have the resources of other women, other individuals who've done what we want to do or who at least have the same tenacity that we have, you know, and, and, you know, we think that you mentioned earlier that with social media, it's easy to launch and it really is, you know, if you know what you're doing, if you have a halfway clue and launch out in faith, you can build something that's worth building. It's not nearly as difficult as it was 10 years ago, you know, before social media was really what it was. Um, And so we have this wonderful ability to build, to work, to do, to run with the vision. And so I just want to encourage all of you ladies, and I know some of y'all, I see you, Margaret. (laughs) I see you, Maltoria. I know some of you are being really blessed by this. And it's just like, take this and run with it. Take it and say, if Zemi could do it, I almost said it's the Desi and Zemi show, you know, but (laughs) 
you know, if, if Zemi can do it, if Jazz can do it, you know, you can do this, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you have a husband, well, I hope you have a husband who's understanding. If you are in the single space, you know, let me tell you something, ladies. I know this from experience. I am single, as in not dating, as in not been on a date in a long time. <laughs> but, you know, um, in my last relationship, that particular guy recognized that I had the hand of God on my life. Mm -hmm. But I learned the hard way that somebody recognizing that and someone supporting that are two different That's things. Different things. Yeah. He wanted me to fit myself into a box to mm -hmm. become something like personality wise. Cause it's like the purpose is not negotiable, but I, I bought into it a little bit. Like with the personality, let me try and make myself small to fit into what his idea of an acceptable wife is, you know, mm -hmm. and the devil is a liar. He's a liar. You know, um, one of the things um, Marshawn Evans Daniels has said, Lisa Bevere actually said this to her. She said, Marshawn, if you shrink, um, oh, what did she say? If you shrink, you're going to disappear or something like that. <laughs> you know, your job is not to shrink. You know, we are not those who shrink back. So if God gave you a vision, go for it. If he told exactly. you to launch a blog, blog, get my book blog newer on Amazon and do it. You know, if if he if you're getting married, if you want to figure out how to launch your own tutoring business, go talk to Zimmy. You know, like there are women who can be resources who can help you, but do it. You know, um, I I've had my own virtual writing and editing company since 2010. And one of the more annoying things that happens from time to time is someone who will tell me about this book they want to write, whether it's fiction or theological or whatever, you know, and they'll tell me all about it. And then they'll, they haven't written it yet. And I'm like, what do you need me for? I'm an editor. Like, you don't need me. Like, don't tell me about what you want to do. You just need to sit down and do it. You know, yeah. so I mean, it's good to make lists, it's good to make goals and set them, but don't be controlled by them, don't be constrained by them, but just do it. Mm -hmm. Just do it. It's spring, spring is in the air, you know, it's probably always summer and spring in the Bahamas, you know, but wherever you are, <laughs> it's spring, just do it launch out you know I one of the words I gave last night was you know this is a time for open doors you know mm -hmm. and so I believe especially for those of you who've been oppressed who've been you know in in um not pleasant situations you especially this is your time to launch out because everyone who thought you couldn't do it everyone who you know advised you lovingly but wrongly you know mm -hmm. The Lord prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And that that's not to say people are your enemies because they're not. But, like, there are different spirits that want to stop you. They want to stop you. They mm -hmm. want to hold your growth. They want to hold you back because they know people are going to be blessed by what you have if you just launch out in the yeah. mind And I think, I think that's a part of why... I think that's a part of why our marriage was attacked, even like leading up to the wedding day, because of, you know, like what is going to happen through the marriage. So even on our hardest days, I'm like, I know this marriage has purpose. And if I didn't believe it in the flesh, I'm like, God sent the rainbow. And I, you know, it rained, it rained on our wedding day, which was incredibly stressful because um, we didn't have any tents, whether for the wedding or the reception. Um, but I said to Ian ages before I said, you know, I know what God's going to do. He's going to let it rain so I can see the rainbow. And I was thinking, oh, it's going to have the rainbow while I'm getting ready for the wedding. It's going to be beautiful. No, the, the rainbow appeared during our vows. And so I always, always, always lean on that, that God is in it. And not just, you know, in, in our marriage, but like, you know, within us and pushing us um, to do great things and to build. Let me turn the light on. <laughs> and um, one of the... Um, one of the things that you said that was a struggle point for me was copying. You know, like you, you, you didn't necessarily say copying. You said like people doing 
I gotta come inside after. You said people doing um, similar things as you, but no one can do it like you. Mm-hmm. And um, I had an issue. You wanna say bye? Bye. bye. <laughs> we're, we're going to night of worship. Okay, have fun. <laughs> no, Ian, Ian is leading praise and worship, so he's gonna sing. Um, so I take this off. So I had an issue with copy and I'd always come to Ian. Like some people will just like totally copy and paste my statuses. And I would go to Ian. I'm like, Ian, I so I'm so discouraged. I don't want to do this anymore. Like I just, just want to shut up, <laughs> you know, because I had an issue with, with feeling like I was being copied. And even when I started Wifer, right after that, something popped up, which had a similar premise, but wasn't founded in God in the same way. Right. And so God had to deal with me and he said, he, I got a prophetic word, do not compare yourself to others. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, like, I don't compare myself to people. Like, I don't sit and be like, oh, you know, I, I don't feel like I do that. But what God was showing me was even in thinking that they're copying my idea, I'm mm-hmm. comparing my idea to mm-hmm. their version of my idea. And God yeah. is saying, don't do that. You know, don't do that. Don't even worry about it. What You know, every assignment he gives, each person is unique. So you may run off and... You may have my idea and you spin it in a way and you reach other people and I reach other people and we may be able to partner. Like you have She Builds, I have Wifer, we can partner. I have other friends in ministry, we can partner. So I I know you're big on that, like no competition in ministry. We are servants, literally. We are servants. Mm -hmm. We are servants in the vineyard. And in today's world, that means like you're taking calls late at night. You are answering DMs. You putting yourself aside to to work on projects. Like we literally serve as unto the Lord. So it's not all glitz and glamour. It's a lot of hard work. When people see you put out a book or a project or anything like that, there's a lot of sleepless nights. There's a lot of prayer. There's a lot of effort that goes into every single thing right. that is produced. You have to check your intellectual property in the Bahamas. That concept does not exist. We have wow. no protection for intellectual property here. And so that's a big problem. So, um, you know, but you just have to, I just have to trust God that he would protect these, these elements. And then, you know, just, just keep running and keep, just keep serving. And if you copy this, by the time you copy that, you know, God has already manifested something else. And so right. that's how I had to just encourage myself to keep going and to keep pushing because, it's going to happen, you know, whether it's this way or that way, it's going to happen. But you have to build anyway. When right. Noah was building, Noah had to build an ark. Like he wasn't given a ship. He had to build an ark. And it didn't matter what people were saying, what they were doing, if they decided to build a raft or whatever they decided to do. He right. was building an ark. That was his assignment. And so we have to look at it the same way. We have an assignment. Keep building. Mm-hmm. Keep building. Because when the rain comes. And other people are are perishing because they didn't do what God said to do. You know that you stood firm and you did what God told you to do. And you saved who God told you to save and who God put you on this earth to save. So that's all we have to do. Make sure that we are in alignment, that we stay in alignment, you know, and, and sometimes that hurts, <laughs> you know, that's, that's huge. Like reality checks, that's your character being molded and shaped. It hurts sometimes, right. but. You have to be willing to to be banded, to be melted, to be pruned, you know? Like, all of that is not fun. None of that is fun. But you have to be open to that, you know what I mean? Because that's that's a part of the territory. So when you build in, like, you see carpenters, they have, like, calluses or they have dirty fingernails. It's not all glitz and glamour. This is work. But God rewards. God restores, like... And I, I told my friend who was who was worried about pricing her her e course. Mm-hmm. I'm like, prices so that you could have afforded it. If you couldn't afford fifty dollars for a course, you shouldn't mm-hmm. be having a course for fifty dollars. And I know people would get at me for that, but I truly believe that God, God is the one who pays us. And if God was able to give me good jobs when I had no degree, you know, mm-hmm. like. I'm talking back to back, great jobs. And when I left one, I got a 20% increase in salary to the other. And that was all God, you know, that was none of me. And that's how I live life. Like God is going to, what he, what he sees you doing in private, he's going to reward you sometimes privately, sometimes publicly, but I am most proud of who I am in private. And when I hear my husband speak about me and he sees who I am in private, that's who I am most proud of. 
And I want every woman to have that experience, to be most proud of who they are when no one is watching, when the camera is off, you know, when they're not tweeting or anything like that, but who they are when no one is around. I love that. And, you know, dealing with the copying that you were talking about, um, and even in the Bahamas where it's a huge issue, you know, the, the problem is that if somebody copies you, the God factor is not in it. You know, it's like yeah. if someone flips a church and tries to take your members and go, okay, you might have fruit for a couple, couple months, you know, but give it about three to six months, give it, give it about a year and yours is going to fall apart. But because the God factor is in mine, you can't replicate the God factor. You can't no. replicate true, the spirit of the thing when you're not in alignment and connected to it. And so that's huge. So don't ever let anybody, you know, take that from you you know if you are in yeah. alignment with heaven respectfully score everyone else <laughs> it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because when you are building with the mind and i talked about this in sort of my introductory video from friday night um in in it's in the she built on the she builds page on facebook but um you know whenever god gave um a man or woman but mostly men you know in the bible something to build he gave them plans so yeah. he said, you know what, this is how you build the ark. Um, and I, I mm -hmm. use the example, specifically speaking of comparing and copying and duplicating and all that, um, you know, think of the tabernacles in the temple. Moses and David both built tabernacles, but they did not build them the same way. They did no. not because Moses had a specific set of instructions. Moses' tabernacle was mobile. They were in the wilderness, you know? Mm -hmm. they, was um it was it was fixed you know it was stationary and then neither of the tabernacles although similar in nature were not the same as solomon's temple so it's like you have to build what god mm -hmm. is telling you to build how he's telling mm -hmm. you to build it the purpose of the tabernacle and the temple was the same but the method by which they built it was completely different because it was for different people it was for a different mm -hmm. time. It was for a different season, for a different era. And so you have to know that when God is telling you to do something a certain way, to price something a certain way, you know, and people can disagree with that. That's great. You know, there, there's business advice. That's, that's excellent. There's wisdom. That's excellent in general. And then there's wisdom that is for you in your situation in this season of your life. And it is not mm -hmm. the same thing. Someone can no. tell you amazing things in the world and they can be true they can write a book about it they can be a best-selling author but if it's not what god told you to do it doesn't matter it doesn't matter so who cares about the people who copy you because they can't produce the content they can't write your books they can't they can't do what you can do and that's the same for everybody no. watching they cannot do what you can do and so um i think that's a good note to end on <laughs> with the yeah. interview um so zemi what's next for you well we have a meetup tomorrow for wifer it's our very first um so i meet the girls face to face and um you know just seeing what god wants to do from there i am totally open like you messaged me about this and i said yes so i'm just open to whatever god wants at this point i still work full time and i use you know my experience at work and my money from work to fund a lot of these experiences. And so I'm just here for whatever, you know, like just doing what God wants me to do and trying to be intentional about my time while still taking care of my pets and being a good wife. So that's it. it. And how can people and I don't, connect with you? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, um, oh, I can't even remember it now. Maybe I'll... <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it a um, few minutes to come back, but let us know how to reach out to you. I, I remember. So I was thinking like um, when I was a single, I had a lot of discontentment in, in that season. Mm -hmm. And um, when I, I just, I felt, I just could never be happy. I could read all the books about it and I never felt comfortable. And then I was, I was engaged and I had, I didn't know, I liked engagement better, but I kind of felt like, okay, like you, when you're single and you don't have a guy, you kind of know what to do. You prep when you have the one in your life. I kind of didn't know what to do because wow. I hadn't, I hadn't prepped for that season. You know, I call it like the mean, meantime phase. And so being a new wife with no kids, 
I finally learned contentment because mm -hmm. I realized like, you know, marriage wasn't an easy transition. It was not an easy transition. And we had a lot of hiccups. And so it kind of made me realize, do not rush a season. Do mm -hmm. not rush to jump into the next thing. So I have all this gas in the tank to pursue all these things while I have no children. And I'm just going to run with that. I'm not going to worry when is God going to bless me with kids or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be be faithful and just run. And so if you want to watch me run in closing, <laughs> um, you can follow me. You see my um, Facebook is Zemi Stewart. And then my Instagram is Zemi Regine. I'll write it here. And my DM is always open. You know, anybody who wants to talk, I have an open DM policy. As long as you're female. Right. I don't do guys. Yeah. So you could go to my husband if you need some advice. Right. I love it. It was so great to be a part of your first. You yes. know, that was awesome. I thank you for the opportunity. And it's so great to meet you finally. Yes. We are so going to connect. <laughs> and I want to say this. Y'all have it on record. Zimmy, write the book write the book about your marriage in that whole single to marriage process write the daggone book okay yeah. <laughs> so take it encourage yourself with that and i do want to say the speaking of meetups i am launching the first meetup for she builds and we're trying to do it on the this is brand spanking new y'all okay <laughs> brand spanking new but I just want to get about 10 to 20 ladies who are in the Charlotte area or will be around 11th if we can't get it on the 11th we'll do the 12th but keep those dates in mind um there will be a cost um we're trying to do dinner still finalizing the details but you know for for this type of environment you know if you want to get cute you can if you're coming straight from work you can it's whatever if you're in the charlotte area stay tuned because we are doing a meetup ladies okay so that's going to be next week thursday or friday so stay tuned zemi thank you so much thank ian for me i love you and i'm so putting this on youtube okay <laughs> um, and you guys <laughs> thank please, you so you much yes Yes, and if you haven't already <laughs> liked She Builds or uh, on Facebook or Instagram, the handle is the same, Graced to Build. That's G-R-A-C-E-D to Build, <laughs> okay? So you guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Zemi. You guys go flood Zemi with gratitude and wonderfulness and fun emojis, okay? <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Good night. Good night. <laughs>